Welcome to That's Good Sports, I am Brandon. I hope you didn't miss the exciting follow-up to Tank Bowl with the Broncos and Titans Punt Bowl 2019 Perna. The Titans made it through an entire game where every one of their drives ended in a punt, interception, or turnover on down. 17 total punts in this bloodbath. So if you wanted to see a game where both punters had to be carried off of the field due to dehydration like a hungover Michael Jordan, Broncos Titans is your refuge. Linebacker Alexander Johnson cleared up any confusion about his distinct celebration and confirmed it is indeed osteoporosis bus driver. I came up with like a little thing of, you know, guys be calling themselves goats and stuff like that. Because bus drivers do run over goats, which sounds like... <coughs> so osteoporosis bus driver just seemed right. The only thing more dangerous on the road is drunk osteoporosis motorcycle driver, which is Kareem Jackson's new go-to celebration. Today, I will recap the second Broncos victory. That's right, two. It's no accident, folks. This is real. And uh, did I offend Justin Simmons' mom on Twitter? I think I did, and I will tell you about it at the end of this episode. That's good sports. Uh, yeah! Please, for daily football coverage and bad jokes, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I do have Big Dick Patreon shoutouts for my new patrons. Timothy Moore, Daniel Howell with a nice 10 spot. Brandon Perna is my dad. Hey, son, if I wanted you to know who I was, I never would have left. Sorry it took so long for me to give you money, Brandon. You are forgiven. Matt Amidon, Daniel Rice, Rochi, Jason Vazbender, Damian Scott, I got five on it with five. And Damian, after your Jets beat the Cowboys, I can definitely give the Jets a little love. Titans head coach Mike Vrabel definitely doesn't have to worry about cutting his dick off anytime soon for a Super Bowl. I think the thought of that in a close game though had Vrabel worried. Why else would he be sweating like a pig on the sideline in 69 degree fall weather? Maybe he was delirious because I did see him waving an invisible magic wand. Sorry, Mike. I don't even think a real magic wand could fix Marcus Mariota. The biggest disappointment to come out of Hawaii since the big bounce. My confidence though in the Denver defense grows every week. The Broncos have not allowed a touchdown for nine quarters. That's $2.25. They have gone from historically bad with no sacks, no turnovers, to historically big dick performers in just weeks. A seven sack, three interception outing against Tennessee is the best for a Broncos unit since 1984. The year I was born, in the year George Orwell's psychic prediction became wrong as shit. It. You were about 35 years off with your stupid idiot book writing, nerd. <laughs> a Denver Force 9 Titan punts ended three drives with interceptions and stopped them whenever they tried to go for it on fourth down. That's how you pitch a shutout in not baseball. That's a goose egg delivered by a defense missing its first round edge rusher, its free agent corner who was supposed to start, the corner that emerged as the number two in absence of that corner, and a rotation at linebacker that took four to five weeks to figure out. Now there's a lot of good to take away from this game game. Brandon McManus was loose. The Gooch was loose and he nailed all three of his field goals and he broke his streak of missing seven straight kicks over 50 yards. Returner Deontay Spencer is looking like a key find for the Broncos punt return game. He had a 42 yard return featuring the best block not block I've ever witnessed, which set up the first three points of the game for the Broncos. However, the Broncos offense is starting to concern me. Emmanuel Sanders was injured in this game. Life without Emmanuel. The worst lifetime movie of the week I can imagine. Tennessee lost one of their best defensive players on the opening drive and linebacker Jayon Brown, and Denver still couldn't score a touchdown until the third quarter. Ryan Tannehill also enters the game in the third quarter and with nearly half the passing attempts 
almost out through Joe Flacco. Joe had a cool 177 passing yards, zero touchdowns, and another interception. Now, Chris Harris Jr. was the first player to pick off Marcus Mariota in this game, but it wasn't until a second half interception from Justin Simmons that the Broncos found the end zone. Without that pick, and without Spencer's big return, we may have watched the Broncos in a three to zero victory. <laughs> the second Broncos field goal was set up by Joe Flacco getting super horny again and going balls deep for Cortland Slutton. The most sexual duo in the league. Maybe the real reason Mike Vrabel was so hot and bothered on the sideline. My point, the Denver offense was essentially productive enough to muster a field goal on its own merit. The only thing worse than seeing your first round tight end completely lose a poorly underthrown ball in the devil's eye, aka the sun, is calling this exact play in the prediction episode. Now he's not underrated, but my biggest fear is safety Kevin Byard picking off a Joe Flacco deep ball. After that third quarter Justin Simmons pick, Royce Freeman took a short pass 19 yards to the right side. Then wide receiver Deshaun Hamilton carved out 13 as he filled in for Emmanuel Sanders and Mr. Colorado himself ended the only touchdown drive of the game with the short but dynamic run into the end zone. Jano goes right, Lindsey goes left, and Denver makes a boring smash mouth old school football game mildly interesting for a moment. And like the rest of the NFL, this game was heavily over officiated. Derek Wolf was flagged on the Chris Harris Jr. interception for lightly pushing Marcus Mariota's shoulder. Wolf also had a stupid holding penalty. Despite that great play, the Broncos are 100% cursed within the final two minutes of the half. It is where all bad things happen to this team. Cortland Sutton also flagged for offensive pass interference, which is a shame Vic Fangio couldn't challenge because it happened within two minutes of the half. I really, really wanted to see Vic lose a pass interference challenge like every other coach in the NFL. You're no head coach until the refs clearly ignore visual evidence and attempt to keep Las Vegas. Vegas happy. The bad news is not a single person earned the Big Dick Player Award. The good news is that's because too many guys on defense are playing too well right now. Demarcus Walker may be the most improved now that he doesn't have suck-ass coaches telling him what to do. VJ's Arizona defense is currently giving up the fourth most points per game and the third most yards per game. Corner Devontae Harris is playing admirably in place of Devontae Bosby. Derek Wolf had two sacks. Alexander Johnson a sack and a half and nine tackles. Three picks between Chris Harris, Justin Simmons, and Kareem Jackson. And Strap Harris allowed zero catches on the day. The Broncos secondary could have had the deadliest group of shared names had Bosby not been injured. There was Devontae Bosby, Devontae Harris, and Chris Harris. At least, with Shelby Harris up front, we have a trifecta of Harris's. So, just one extra big dick award for all of the guys to share. I do have to question Derrick Henry's armadillo tail. Don't get me wrong, I think it's cool, and I know he can't cut it off because his brain stems have started to grow nerves into it. But as a running back, is the armadillo really the animal spirit powers you want to harness? Well, armadillos are armored and fast, but they're most famous for getting run over on Texas highways. A lot like the Cowboys playoff chances every week. I mean, 15 carries for 28 yards on a 1.9 yard per carry average really isn't even worthy of the armadillo. That was by far Henry's worst performance of the season, so credit the Broncos run defense and Marcus Mariota for the assist and being absolutely no threat throwing the football. John Elway realized the camera was on him during this game and appropriately rotated his game sheet so it was upside down. Hey, this isn't a fucking drink menu. Somebody bring me whatever the upside down word is for scotch, pronto. Now, historically speaking, I only do bad poetry for Philip Rivers and Cam Newton once, but per request, you have asked, I bring it back for Marcus Mariota. And I do feel like I have enough material to work with as long as I throw in Ryan Tannehill in this week's edition of Bad Poetry. <laughs> Mariota, Mariota, you are not the gota. You threw two picks. 
do more than your quota. You were intercepted by Harris and Simmons. That's so bad, I hope you only get paid in persimmons. A fruit so boring, just like your offense, the Japanese dry it out to make hashigaki. I can easily think of another Japanese phrase to rhyme with hashigaki, but I won't say it today. Mariota, Mariota, I know you're not much of a talker. Maybe that's why your biggest weakness is the Broncos walker. Now, Marcus, I hate to be mean, but you can't even throw a fucking screen. The Titans acquired wide receiver Adam Humphreys to make their offense fire like pistons. I can't believe I have to say he may have been better with Jameis Winston. Mariota, Mariota, you were sacked by a wolf on a full moon. It must mean your career as a starter will be over soon. You were benched by Vrabel because your arm was not able. So sit back and relax in the QB stable. Stability at QB is something to Tennessee will never see. And once his mustache got the itch, he knew Mariota he had to ditch. So Tannehill, Tannehill, you looked much better, but better's not best when your final score is also a letter. I know you're glad just not to be a dolphin, where you were ignored, but even Miami put points on the board. You still have a hot wife, so as bad as this went, your only real worry is a Musburger named Brent. Perhaps you will start the rest of the season, but you won't see the field when they draft Jacob Eason. Mariota and Tannehill, when you get beat, look to the elite, Joe. And when you make a shitty throw, say, my bad, my bad, for there's another down to be had. There are some passes you just can't have back, especially the ones you throw off a no offense back. <laughs> Bad poetry. Wesley Woodyard, of course, returned to Denver for the first time since 2013. And he hit Joe Flacco as hard as I would have liked him to do in 2013 in the playoff game between the Broncos and the Ravens. Well, I guess it's better late than never, Wesley. During the game, I did tweet that Justin Simmons may be turnover cursed because last week he fumbled after his interception, and this week a fumble was negated because his foot was out of bounds when he touched the fumbling ball. He of course made up for it later with an interception, but his mom responded to my tweet today, or maybe not, disappointed in protective mother face emoji. I think that's what that is. I like Justin Simmons, and I now like him more, knowing that if I tweet something bad about him, his mom will most certainly kick my ass. So, I apologize, Kimberly Simmons. I do respect your son. Don't ever, ever forget how much I respect Justin Simmons. Especially as I say he deserves a big new contract from the Broncos. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Chiefs Broncos coming up Thursday night. Oh my God. Two wins in a row makes this game actually pretty exciting. Chiefs two losses. Also give that Wilkie six a follow. He was a big help today for bad poetry.